there we are. So the BA Visual Effects at Middlesex University. My name is Sergio Gonzalez. I'm the program leader. Um, I'm an industry person. I come from um, character animation and motion capture background as well as freelance visual effects doing compositing and, and that kind of work. Um, I've worked on feature films like Avatar, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Tintin, Happy Feet, um, and others. And uh, I'm an active artist and active freelancer. So um, you know that when you're coming to this school, you're getting um, people who are actually doing the work. Um, so welcome. Um, we're going to do two things today. We're going to review the structure of the course just briefly, just in case you have um, you haven't been to um, an open day before. If if you have been to an open day before, could you please put um, a, a, a question in there saying yes, I've been to an open day. And if you could, if you haven't been to one before, please enter something in there saying that you haven't been. Um, so that way we know sort of who we're seeing. Um, and then, um, so, but we'll do a, a, a quick review just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. And then what we'll do is we are going to do a project case study. It's called, and, and the, the session in general is called the VFX Artist Toolkit. And, um, and so it's gonna be sort of a case study in one of the projects that we've done. And a project that, that you would be able to do as well in your, in your um, experience here in the course. Okay, so let's see. All right, so yeah, a couple of people have not been to an open day yet. Um, no one's been to an on-site open day, unfortunately, because we've been in a, um, in a, in a different kind of situation this year, haven't we? Uh, but here we go. So we're in, our course is a unique blend of sort of the artistic and the technical, right? So um, it, it's a lot of 2D video compositing using, in the beginning, After Effects, but then we get into Nuke, which is industry standard compositing software. And then we do, uh, you know, we also do 3D modeling, rendering, and simulation of dynamic effects, which I'm going to show you some things later. So it's good that we are moving on here. Here we go. Um, one of the key things to know about us is that um, we're very proud of our national student survey um, results, right? So um, we have a 95% student satisfaction result on the on the NSS. And this was the last, this was last year's um, numbers and this year's numbers were about to go through because the survey just completed. Um, but um, from our course page, if you just scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to click on a link where you'll be able to see the actual feedback from the course. And, you know, one of the things that we are um, um, attributing most of this student satisfaction to is our student support, right? The students don't feel like they're left alone. So what I want you to do just now is, is, is answer probably the most obvious question that you're going to have today, which is, how is this going to work? There's a global pandemic. It's ongoing. How is this going to work going into the next year? How are you going to support me in my, in my studies? Are we going to be able to go onto campus? And it's a very good question. I'm glad you answered it, asked it, uh, and I'm going to answer it. Um, so here's the plan, right? How are we going to support learning and teaching? So what we're going to do is now remember there is we 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 do a lot of student support here, right? Um, so the learning experience is is trying to, um, to to combine the best parts of this last year's online delivery with the best parts of on campus delivery. Okay, so you know you're you're spending a lot of money. You want, you're going to university. You'd like to have the university experience, and some part of that for some people includes being on campus and using the facilities that we have there. Our motion capture studio, our green screen studio, um, all of our equipment, um, and um, our several rooms. We have about seven rooms full of computers called digital media workshops, and they're they're just computer labs. Um, where you can where you can uh, go to class. So we do want to go back to campus, but we also want to keep what worked about this last year. So uh, the majority of lessons online are going to. Oh, we also need to to have a, a plan just in case um, something else happens with with the pandemic, and we want to make sure that we have our bases covered um, because this past year has been completely online, doing what we're gonna what I'm talking about right now. So the majority of lessons online are still going to be via my my learning, which is our um, web portal um, and Discord. So if you haven't heard of Discord, it's a um, it's 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 a type of chat software where you can join a group. And I'm going to show you that what that means and what that looks like. 
We use a blend of live lecture and pre-recorded demonstrations to create engaging project-based learning in a flipped classroom format. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about what that means today. In addition to that, we are going on campus. We are doing a weekly on-campus studio day, right? So we've found during using student surveys and from student feedback, we, we really pay attention to student feedback. Um, we found that what the students really miss is, yes, interacting with us one-on-one -on -one and, and getting lessons and, and, um, and demonstrations from us one-on-one -on -one and interacting with the kit, but what they really miss is interacting with other students. And so what we're doing is we're planning a studio day. So every week you're going to come to a studio day and all of the VFX students will be there. We'll have planned activities where you'll, there, you'll learn how to use equipment. We'll do projects that are, we'll do activities that are focused on getting you the materials that you need to complete the projects um, that you have in your course, right? So um, that's what it's all about. Um, so we're gonna work with students um, in small groups to learn VFX related equipment and techniques. This is also an opportunity to provide tutorials and feedback. So we're gonna be there um, to, to make sure that you see us um, and, and wonderful things like that. Um, we do understand that there are some students, there are some people who, um, who might have a difficult situation in terms of, um, in terms of, of the pandemic and that sort of thing. So we're gonna make sure that, um, that all of the um, learning outcomes of the course and all the assessments are also possible to complete online if we enter into another sort of lockdown situation. So we have a plan and we have a way that we think works really well to make sure that you feel supported. Now, in terms of support, um, we use Discord. All of our students are joined up on Discord. Now, some of you might be gamers or some of you might already know about Discord. If you don't, though, then we can teach you and we can you can um, learn about that. Um, and that's how we hold class. We don't use Zoom. We don't do that sort, sort of thing. What we do is we, we join a big um, chat room. It's not like this. So what we're doing now is a webinar uh, format where, um, where I'm talking and you're listening. And that's not the way that we conduct our courses, classes usually. What we do with our classes is we are all in one big chat room and I'm sharing my screen, showing software. You can share your screen to talk about what your challenges you're having with the software and get feedback on your work. Um, in addition to that, um, we record all of our videos, uh, our, our um, class sessions, right? And we show them, on, we upload them to the media gallery. I'm gonna just show you what that media gallery looks like. This is our media gallery here, you see. So almost every lesson from the last um, several years, from the last two or three years are recorded. And this is part of what we're using to, um, to, to inform the students of what to do. So we can see here that we've got our own portal where we can show um, what's going on. Right, so this is this is called My Learning, which is our um, website. We also have what's called a wiki. So if you've heard of um, Wikipedia, we have our own version of that. And so um, on here, so this is the front page of that, where we, um, for example, here's the page, the wiki page for Maya, right, um, where we can give you a lot more information if you need it, okay? Um, we also have timetable support with technicians. Time is when you know you can get a technician. Times when you know you can get support. Um, we have SLAs and GAAs, which are student learning assistants and graduate academic assistants. Now, an SLA is another student in an older year, right? So we're gonna have third year students and first year students this year. And so the third year students will be, some of them will be SLAs to help you um, as a first year student with your coursework, okay? Um, and GAAs are graduates who um, have worked for a little while and come back to the school to, um, to, to assist with coursework as well. And we have uh, GAA to support you. Um, if you need a tutorial from myself or from my colleagues, uh, John and Johnny, who also teach on the course, then then that's available to you. And we're getting in guest speakers pretty regularly to um, to to talk to you about the industry and about um, how you can be more prepared to apply for jobs for the industry. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat, and I will um, make sure to um, to do that. 
here's an example. Here's a, just a little peek of what our Discord server looks like. Let me go into full screen here. This is a little peek of what our Discord server looks like. Um, we have um, chat rooms for each of the year groups, right? And we also have voice chat rooms. So we would all join in to one. Um, we can see here an example um, with um, someone sharing their screen. And um, it's sort of a tutorial session. Something that I really like about our Discord is that we have a lot of our graduates who are still on the Discord and they're working in industry now and doing different, just going, moving on with their lives. But they're also, they come around and they and they they chat with us and they hang out with the students. So we're, we're building as a creative community. This is really about building a creative community and a community of creative practice. Okay, um, let's see. Does the wiki cover Cinema 4D? We're going to talk about the software. We don't cover Cinema 4D. We're more about Maya and and Houdini and some other software. But we're going to tell you talk exactly about that. Um, so graduate outcomes. We have students who have we have graduates who are working at Frame Store, Industrial Light and Magic, Moving Picture Company, um, We VFX, Apple Studios. That just is recent, um, and the Foundry, which is great, and many more graphic design studios, architectural visualization studios. Okay, and the, the type of entry level roles that you can research to, to see what kind of um, activities we do is um, compositor, junior effects technical director, um, graphic designer, mostly 3D game artists as well, rotoscopers, runners, pro production assistants, that's the type of jobs that people are getting. It's a three year course and um, it's sort of, um, you know, beginner, intermediate and advanced sort of situation. And um, so it's a guided tour of the relevant skills and tools of the visual effects pipeline. It's very project-based, it's very practice-led, right? Every time you're, you're learning theory, but you're learning theory in the context of working on something and making a project, okay? Um, in year one, it's about composite, it's Photoshop and After Effects. It's also 3D using Maya. And, um, and in the second half of the year, there's a large project, um, a large final project to bring the skills together. And then in year two, it gets quite technical and quite advanced, uh, where we're doing um, compositing using the software called Nuke. Um, and then creature modeling, so that's sort of the digital sculpting um, sampler, where you do ZBrush or Blender or um, to do your sculpting. And we're also using Maya and Substance Painter and whatever tools come to mind, uh, whatever tools are needed at the moment. Um, and Houdini, um, doing a dynamic simulation with Houdini. And then in year three, you get to choose what you're going to focus on based on actual job roles that you find out in the wild. So it, it suits you. It, it, it's to your advantage to start now to start looking at jobs that you want to apply for. So if there are any questions about that, about the structure of the course, I went through that very quickly, but I'm, we do have more material available if you need it. Um, but um, yeah, just feel quite free to, to pop a question in the chat. Um, so yeah, so I did answer that live. Okay, that question, great. So let's just talk a little bit about this project that we did. We did a project um, for um, the master's degree in film and um, they were doing a film, uh, a short film called I Am Wallace and it's a period film set in the times where people duel with flintlock pistols, right? So these people, these two, um, men that you see here are having a duel. And what they asked us for is to provide the gunfire to actually um, get the fire and the sparks and the smoke to come out of the guns, as well as have a couple of other shots too. Now, the students that we had working on this, um, we had three students working on this, Nathan, Sheridan, and James, okay? So Nathan was mostly interested in compositing. He likes putting images together. He loves Photoshop. He loves working with video and layering things together so that way it looks really seamless, okay? Um, we also have Sheridan. Sheridan likes smoke and fire and creating 3D um, graphics that, that simulate um, um, smoke and fire in a, in a realistic way. And then we had James who's, who has a generalist skill set, who's, who's pretty much good at everything. And he likes CG gore. So he was interested in, in, in doing sort of horror movies and that kind of, kind of work. And so my colleague John and I supported them in any way that they needed along the way. So usually what happens is um, 
we do a lot of collaboration films, uh, collaboration work with our, um, just checking the time here. We do a lot of collaboration work with other programs like BA Film and BA Television. We've even done work for BA Animation. And um, what happens is they'll email, we've done work for, um, for external clients as well, for Film London films that, that have won awards, um, as well as um, um, films that went to festivals, right? So we've, we've done quite a lot of, of, of client style work, which is our, our main um, activity. Um, and usually what happens is an initial meeting, right? So this is the toolkit part, right? The visual effects artist toolkit. What is it that the visual effects artists use um, artists use to, to get this work done. And the first tool is information, right? We interview the client. We say, we sit down with them and say, okay, well, what is it that you need? Um, what, what, what kind of shots are you thinking about? You know, how many shots do you need effects for? And um, um, what is your deadline? When do you plan to shoot the footage? Um, sometimes they plan to shoot the footage, you know, um, in April and then their deadline is in May. So that can create quite a, a, a a time deadline. So then we ask them, well, how early can you shoot some of the pieces that we would need for our for our bit? Um, yeah, and do you already have um, things like storyboards and pre-production done on your film? Um, so that's the first tool. And then we do research, we gather reference. How will you know if the smoke looks right? How will you know if, it, if it's believable and realistic? Okay, so we need to do research. We need to research um, that specific type of, of flintlock pistol. And we need to do um, research fire and smoke and different kinds of and the different kinds of software techniques. We need to evaluate different tools. Maybe there is a situation where Cinema 4D is the best tool for the job. We do have computers with Cinema 4D on them, um, but maybe Houdini is the best tool for the job. Maybe Maya is the best tool for the job. And we, um, we evaluate that and spend a little bit of time doing research and development, especially while we're waiting for the film to take place. So that way, when the footage comes in, we'll be able to um, apply our, their new knowledge to that project, right? Um, and whenever possible, we recommend that the filmmakers and the visual effects artists get together and they do test shots, you know, even if it's just on your phone and you're just using, you know, a fake prop to, to pretend to be the 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 flintlock pistol um, just so that way we can start to 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 put some things together so that way you, you never want the actual project to be the first time you do something right you want to get a little bit of practice and experience in whenever possible we like to have a visual effects student on set with the film that's not always possible sometimes the film is already shot when especially for external clients when they come to us looking for work for for us to do work for them we um we sometimes have to just accept whatever footage they come in um we also say no sometimes because sometimes the project is is not suitable but um but what if but what is a best case scenario in a best case scenario we would have some lens information about the camera we would have information about the distance from the camera to the subject that's being shot. We would have some lighting information using these interesting spheres here, right? You see these, these sort of gray and chrome um, balls as well as a color chart here. This is really useful information um, for us to use to, to make sure that the lighting that we're using is matching in the 3D software is matching the light that is um, um, it's being captured on set in footage, right? Because that's something we can't change. We can't change the live action footage, but we can change the um, uh, what we're creating to suit it, right? And then we might even capture an HDRI. So that's a high dynamic range image. And we have the, we have all this kit. We have all the kit to do this stuff at Middlesex University. Um, and so we might um, capture, but if, if the footage already exists, we might um, use a downloaded HDRI as well, something that matches. So here I went on to HDRI Haven and I found one that was in the forest. So we know that we are going to have a relatively similar lighting situation using this HDR image um, when we're creating things. Now the fun part is getting to use the software, isn't it? Right. So we have um, these are the main tools here. We, you know, we'll add on Photoshop and Premiere as well. But the main tools of the trade here are Autodesk Maya, which students get for free. Um, Side Effects Houdini, which students can get for free. Uh, the Foundry Nuke, which students could also use for free, and Blender. Right. Um, we can also use ZBrush as well, and we can give you access to ZBrush. 
um, ZBrush is installed in the computer labs as well. Um, in the case of a situation where um, where we can't go to campus again, then um, this past year we have been using Splashtop for remote access. So students who are at home who don't have a computer um, can uh, use their own computer at home, whatever state it's in, or they can actually borrow a laptop from the university. Um, if they're in the UK, if they're in the in the London area, and we can courier the laptop to them. Um, but um, this year, what we need to do is we need people to come to campus. Um, so we have bookable study spaces where you can spend three hours um, working on campus and have a good internet. Uh, we've also found that some students really sh uh, have um, a, a situation where they would be more productive if they if they came to school. So um, so that's definitely available to you. And we also have a render farm, which is a, a huge help, where we um, are able to um, render this complex CG imagery um, to a high level, to a high quality level. But really, the most important tool for you is practice and experience, right? This is not a part-time thing. It takes time. It takes practice. And the best thing you can do is um, is be interested and 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 chase up information and be someone who tries things on your own, um, and and not necessarily wait for someone to give you permission or give you an assignment. Um, the more you can go and practice, the better. I'm going to take this moment to just answer a question. What are we expected to know coming into this course? That's a great question. Um, wait. There we go. What are we expected to know? So Aeon, thank you for your question. Um, we're assuming that you don't have, that you're at the beginning. We're assuming that you're a beginner. Um, but to be honest, the students who know a bit of Photoshop, a bit of, actually, let me go to that slide right now. Cool. I have your answer ready for you. What can you do for, to prepare? Um, look at VFX breakdowns on YouTube. Spend a lot of time looking at VFX breakdowns and really think, oh, is this something that I'm interested in doing? Um, it would be, it would help if you've done Photoshop or Krita, it's, it's the, the free version of it. Um, and some video work, if you've done a bunch of video, bit of video work as well, would be helpful. And it would help if you've done some 3D. Blender's free, you can download Blender for free and start doing the tutorials. We found that if students come in and they haven't done any 3D and they haven't done any Photoshop, they really struggle. So, um, so I would really recommend that you make the most of your time during the summer and, and you know use free software. If you want, you can email me and I can recommend software to you that you don't have to pay for. But um, you know Photoshop or Krita, um, maybe a bit of video editing, and um, definitely some 3D using Blender. Um, we, we jump into Maya. <clears throat> we use Blender as a secondary tool right now, but um, for the most part, we're using Maya and then Houdini as well. But it's, it's quite technical, so it, it's best to give yourself a head start. You know? And if you have questions on how you can uh, do that, then we're happy to, to answer. So I hope that you... Um, that you that I answered your question well. If you have any further questions, I'm willing, I'm happy to um, I'm happy to help. At this point, what I want to do is I want to show you video. I've shown you a lot of slides. Usually, we're not in PowerPoint. We, PowerPoint is not a tool that I use in the course. And basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to move into um, a little bit more of the kind of um, atmosphere that we have. Um, in the course itself, right? So usually what I'm doing, that's that's the effect here. So let, let me just raise this up a little bit, increase the size of this a tiny bit. And um, actually I was at a good size already. I shouldn't have messed with it. All right. So here are the shots, including a little bit of a breakdown. So those were the shots there. Now, what I want to show you about these shots is that um, we have this this first shot here. So this is a wide shot, right? And it's of two men who are going to duel. And at some point, what happens is we have um, the smoke and the fire coming out of the guns. So we had to do research to, to learn about how that is best done. Um, what happens in the film is actually both of, both of these fires, uh, both of these flintlock pistols backfire. And so we had to 
simulate the smoke. So that smoke is fake, obviously, because we're not actually going to shoot real um, weapons because that would be dangerous. And um, but beautiful little simulations by Sheridan here, and really well composited by Nathan. Okay, so this is a team effort. Visual effects and filmmaking is a team effort, right? And so you get a chance to collaborate with other courses, and you get a chance to do um, teamwork in this course, which is something that uh, that we're really proud of, and I think let's helps us stand apart from other universities. Um, so that's one of the shots there. And so that took some time. That was a small effect as well. And we're not using stock video from for this effect. They actually created the, the, the stuff themselves. Um, I don't have that exact shot here, but I'm going to show you this. This is um, this is Maya. OK, so this is Maya. I, I think they used Houdini for that. But what I've got here is like a little scene that I've made. OK, so this is like a little scene. Um, and so I'll just press play. And what we have is some smoke coming out of this sort of um, um, sewer cover um, on the city street. Okay, so this is just like a little simulation that I set up. And, um, you know, we can make this look realistic and we can actually, if we had footage of, of sort of a London street and we see the, the, the uh, a place where smoke would come out, then we can have the smoke coming through there, which is actually part of what, this is part of what we're planning for, for year one for the big project. Um, the theme is called Sci-Fi City, right? So we're gonna make these amazing Sci-Fi City scenes. And um, and this is part of it. We're gonna have smoke coming out of something like a, 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 like a, a, a vent, ventilation shaft, right? Um, and it's kind of a Blade Runner style city. Um, and what it is, is um, so you create sort of 3D models, right? Of, um, of an environment. And then here, see this little symbol here, this is an emitter. And what that's doing is it is releasing smoke. And then you, this is, you know, if you were on a film set, you would have someone underneath, you know, this this environment piece with a smoke machine and they would be um, um, waving the smoke and machine back and forth to get a little bit of variation in the smoke. And this is basically what we're doing as well. So if you just think of you think of this environment as a film set or as a photo shoot, you know, as a studio shoot, then then you are already halfway towards um, towards understanding the processes that we would go through here. You know, even when we're setting up lights in, in 3D and everything like that, we're um, um, doing things in a very similar way than you would do in real life. That's why I'm saying if you have any experience with filmmaking or photography, or 3D, then it's going to help you a lot to understand these things. And if you don't, you know, if you have a phone or if your friend has a phone, you know, go out and 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 do some photography and start to understand where light is coming from. Um, you know, really develop an interest and really develop a personal creative practice around this. It'll make you a better VFX artist and make you more employable. Um, we're finding that those students um, who who are interested and do that on their own. Um, they get jobs much faster than, than students who don't. Um, so it's really up to you. It's really what you make of it. Um, let's head back here for a minute. Um, oh, I have a question. Let's see. Smoke from shooting from the left guy's gun looks like dust was blown or paint powder was dropped to the ground. It looks like that. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name properly. Is it Nojus? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name properly. Let me know if I did that properly. Um, but yeah, that, that makes sense. See, okay, so here's the thing. That's a great comment. Yes, it was proper. Thank you. Um, so no, just in the, when we're actually doing class, you would have the opportunity to actually turn on your mic and answer back and we would be a discussion. So that's that's really what a, a class situation looks like. It's, it's, it's us being able to talk to each other and actually have a, a conversation around this. So don't think that class in uh, Middlesex is, is just gonna be this sort of Zoom situation where you're just listening all the time. It's, it's really a, 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 an environment where you're in, um, excuse me, encouraged to, um, to answer back, <laughs> really, and to, um, and to interact. So here's that first shot again. Okay, so that was a 3D simulation. Now here's the next shot that, they, that we did for them. And so it's a bit gross. That's because this is James's work. James likes gore, right? So he likes, he did this thing where he 
sort of <laughs> blew the thumb off. Now we have a little bit of a VFX breakdown. Now look at this. This is a this was just modeled in Maya, right? This is just a CG thumb that was used to um, to look like that. And then we can you can see his actual thumb underneath there, right? And so what we did is we had to paint that out every frame. We had to paint it out every frame and make this attachment here. This is called match moving, where you get the 3D object to move in the same way as the thumb. And then we had to, to, to um, use textures and shaders, uh, textures and materials and lighting to, to make it blend into the hand there. So it's a bit gross. I'm sorry about that about that but sometimes we get that kind of work you know um question has anyone remade a scene like from blade runner was shown to a month earlier but instead of a movie has anyone made a shortcut scene from a game Ooh, yes i have i have an example of that for you yeah oh from a game um yes yeah, so yeah we'll we'll i'll show you some more some more um projects So that's just another one. So it's a nice variety. Now here's one the the now that was a project that was done for a client. Okay. Now I'm going to show you why it's good to do projects for people, right? Why it's good to um, to act as a service provider because what it does is it builds your skill. Now that project was relatively small. That was done in the first half of the year of, of, with third year students who got a pretty good handle on their software, right? And um, what they did was they, um, they, they took on the job because it was in their area of interest anyway. Nathan was interested in compositing. Sheridan was interested in smoke and James was interested in just making weird imagery. Um, and so what they did was they used the knowledge from that smaller project to inform their big project at the end of their degree and build their portfolio piece. And so now um, I'm going to show you these two shots here. This one here is kind of gross. So um, trigger warning, just in case you don't like gross things. But um, this is on our this is all on our show reel. This is why I show these shots, because um, these are all on our on our show reel on Vimeo. Kaboom. So what we have here is we have a real building. This is the Ritterman building at Middlesex University. It's a beautiful building. The inside of it's amazing. And um, what it, what happens is, um, what happened is Sheridan um, used this software Houdini to do a very advanced pyro simulation and um, there are air, there are frames where it looks quite CG, but in, for the most part, it's really believable. And we have the chunks of um, of debris and smoke and all of that good stuff crashing against the ground. And we have a really high resolution smoke simulation here. It took forever to render and simulate, but the result is really pretty. So I'm just going to play it again. Kaboom. So that was really good too. A little bit of bounciness on the on the on the the shards there, but it's perfectly fine um, for the purpose of what we were doing here. And then some compositing, right? Some additional compositing of making the wall look like it has had a a hole blown through it. Um, and of course, we can see like little details. We can pick at little details where it could be better. But you know, for one student doing all of this work on their own, this is great work. This is, um, so his head is about to, to go bleh, and open up. Um, so, bleh. so that was gross. That's James's work. And it's quite believable as well. You know, this head here is actually a 3D scan. We have 3D scanners, we have 3D printers, we have laser cutters, we have so much equipment um, on campus. Um, and so we did a 3D scan. This is my colleague, John. He also teaches on the course. He teaches the, the Houdini class as well as um, um, half of the whole course with me. I teach the other half of the whole course. And um, um, as well as our VFX technician, Johnny, who's, a, who's also industry experienced and has a lot of knowledge. 
And um, so, yeah, he used this 3D scan, which he shaded to be as realistic as possible. Um, and it's believable enough because we wouldn't have noticed. And then yuck, you know, some, some gross stuff happens there. So that was nice. So the, the reason I show you this stuff is that that smaller project helps the student build their big personal project for themselves. So by doing these little um, um, group projects, it helps inform your, your major project at the end. Now let's look at the questions. Okay, I need to ask, have you seen the new VFX movie, Mortal Kombat? And if you are, what are their thoughts on it? I don't know, no, just I haven't seen it yet. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna have to go look at it now after, after this. But thank you for answering that. I'm gonna click these as done. Um, has anyone made a shortcut scene from the game? That's interesting because we were just talking, um, we've been talking for the last year about virtual production. There's this new trend in, in filmmaking called virtual production, and it's using a lot of 3D um, game engines like Unreal Engine. So our, um, our university is buying a lot of new motion capture equipment and a lot of new studio equipment. We're really investing in the school, investing in the future of the, the course. And, um, we are um, going to use this to make films. We're going to we're if, if we're going to involve students in the process as well, um, trying to get film students and TV students and visual effects students to collaborate, um, which is our big thing. We love collaboration, and um, and yeah, yeah, use this new new equipment and and make amazing stuff. Um, so if if you're familiar with Unreal Engine, they just released something called MetaHumans, which is um, is going to be a really amazing thing as well. So those are those projects there. I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna talk you through a couple of the other um, projects that are going on here. Um, this is another project that we did with BA Film. This is a smaller, this is just one shot, right? So, but what we have here is we have, you know, the security guard who is um, interacting with this door. And so the thing is we didn't have this door, but we needed, we needed this sort of, um, asylum door, right? This sort of hospital door. And so what we have here is we have um, the student created a door and created a very um, effective texture for it, rendered it well. We have, um, this is the actual footage that was shot. It could be lit a bit better, um, but we have a lot of like portable green screens and we have a lot of lighting equipment. We have great cameras that you can check out um, and we have training programs for you to learn how to use these. And it's called an induction. So that way you can check them out. And so the footage was done, um, that, that is called an alpha channel. Remember that term alpha channel, because I'm gonna use that a lot. Um, and um, there we go. So that's that all put together. This is a, a first year project. This is a first year project, which is uh, really well done with, uh, if, you ever heard, if you've ever seen the TV show um, or the Netflix show called Stranger Things, um, a child is transported into a different world, right? And so we have this, that's Tomas and um, um, Tomas transports himself in his room into, into the other world, you know what I mean? So he's using the 3D software to create this, um, this sort of alien vine imagery. And then he's using the 2D software, After Effects um, video software to, um, to integrate it, right? We call it integration to make sure that, um, that it all blends together. And then we have these little floaty bits as well. Really nicely done. And then here, when I when I heard cutscene from a game, I, I I thought I immediately thought of this. It's not from a game. This is actually a recreation of a shot from Tron, but um, this is Enrique, and he um, created this recreated this shot where he sort of blows himself apart into um, a bunch of pixels. Right, Middlesex University, come to our school. So Dan asks. Can we access the render farm from our home machines? I would assume so if we were working through Discord, the answer is yes. Yes, you can, Dan. Um, our students are doing that today to render their stuff. They're pro they're, the deadline is, is the 4th of May, right? May the 4th of be, be with you. Um, and um, yeah, so so yes, you can access the render farm through. What, what, what happens is you, um, um, 
you get your project and you package it up and you upload it to one of our school computers um, using Splash Shop, using our remote access software, and then you would um, submit it from there. Yeah, so yes, you can. It works really well. Um, how often do you use practical effects, which are sort of VFX, but yeah, which, okay, how often do you use practical effects? If we did that, it would be for filming it to, um, so for example, if there was a, a, a smoke element that you wanted to create as a custom element, then, then you could do that. Um, practical effects could also mean, you know, if you were doing a, a, like a fireball in the hand, then, you know, you would pretend to have a, you know, your, the fireball in your hand by having your hand in front of you. But we would also have the practical effect of someone off screen with a light sort of shining the light um, onto you. So that way it looks believable. Um, so we don't do a lot of practical effects. That's more like special effects. We're more visual effects, which is after the film shoot. But we do a lot of video shooting as well. If, if we're allowed on campus and we're doing a lot of film shooting. If it comes down to a lockdown situation, that's a little bit more difficult, but, you're but during lockdown, people were still able to check out cameras and, and use the equipment um, and, um, and also book spaces to, to, if they need to sort of get out of the house to, get, to be more productive. Um, Dan asks a question. Wait, let me answer these. Dan asks a question. Do you have to draw alphas for every frame you're compositing? I know they are used for transparency. Yep, that's good. Alpha channels are used for transparency and other things as well, but transfer transparency is the most common thing. And really what um, the answer is, what you're doing is you're drawing shapes and then you can animate those shapes over time. So you don't necessarily have to redo it every frame. It's not like flash where you would have to redo it every frame. Um, what you're doing is you're drawing, you're drawing a curve shape and then you're gonna just animate that over time. And it, it makes it a lot easier. And then we have tricks. We have a lot of different little techniques that we um, can teach you to 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 make that process a little bit easier. But um, but it is a it, it is a big long process to be honest with you. It's something that that it's it's a lot of people's first job doing rotoscoping and painting and um, painting things out. You know, like environment elements, things like that. Or you know, if the boom is in the shot or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to say thank you now. If please um, come to the school, I, th I think we have a great course and we provide um, um, a lot of great support. And we um, we have a really good culture of students who um, of, of a creative community, and I think that's that's really good. And um, and tell all your visual effects interested friends to apply as well because I think it will be really good. Um, at this point, um, it's it's 45 after. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just open it up for any more questions. Are there any more questions? Um, I'm happy to answer questions. What I'll do in the meantime is I'll just talk some more. What should I talk about? Any more questions? All of this made you want to even more to get into Middlesex. Well, welcome, welcome. Feel free to apply. Make sure you talk to our application, or to our admissions um, team and get in contact with them and, and um, that would be great. Our showreel is available here on Vimeo. All you have to do is search Middlesex University VXFX showreel. Um, last year, we didn't, um, Last year, because that when the lockdown hit, um, a lot of the work got disrupted. So this year, we're going to have a lot of new material to put into our showreel. So definitely watch it around June, or sometime around mid June, we're going to release the new showreel. It's going to be great. Um, this is the VFX um, BA Honors course page, um, and um, my email address. I should give you my email address because I think that would be <laughs> helpful. And then I'm probably going to just stop talking because so it's s dot gonzalez at mbx.ac.uk. So free, feel free to um, email me with any questions. Great. Are there any other questions? Will we have the opportunity to create our own HDIs for global illumination, et cetera? Yes, yes, absolutely. We have the um, the tripod mount to do that, and we have the cameras to do it. So um, 
yes, if you want to do that, we, it's, we can show you how. Yeah, no problem. Yes, yes, yes. And that's one of the fun things too, you know, we, visual effects can be a, a, a thing where um, we're sort of sitting at a desk working at a computer quite a lot. And um, so it is nice when we have the opportunity to do live um, sessions together. I'm curious from you, I mean, um, what do you think about that? Do you think that, um, that, that you're looking forward to the, the sessions that we're going to have on campus where you get to be together. Um, it's interesting because we found that the online components, the online things that we've been doing and, and the way we've been teaching the classes have been really effective because the students are finding that they're getting better support now that we're online because it's easier to contact me on, on Discord instead of waiting for me to drive an hour and a half home from campus. So there are situations where the, the online component is, is really useful and really helpful, but we also have a lot of um, desire to do um, on-campus activities whenever we can. So that way you can um, use all this great kit that we've purchased for you. Right? Do you create any assignments for students to make? for a particular scene from a movie or show? Um, not exactly sure what you're asking, but yeah, I mean, those projects that we've seen here, this is part of, I'll just show you the, the, the course again, right? So in year three, what happens is there's four modules in every year. Do I have that here? I have it on a different slide deck. So basically in year one, you're gonna have four modules. In year one, you have four modules, right? So, um, and one of them um, takes place from, from January to May. And that's the, the, the module where you'll be doing one big project. And in this, in this module, what we've usually been doing is we've been having the students recreate a shot from a movie. Right, so select a movie. So we've had people do Blade Runner. We've had people do, um, as you saw, we saw Tron and we saw Stranger Things. We've seen all kinds of different, um, we've seen Doctor Strange. We've seen all sorts. Um, and students also have the opportunity to, to get creative with that and change it up for themselves as well. But yeah, we do have students who um, who do recreate shots from a movie. We're, we're working on that project a little bit because now that things are a little bit different, we might have, when, when Christmas time rolls around, we don't know what kind of access we're gonna have to equipment and, and, and stuff. So we're trying to come up with a way to make sure that, um, or actually we're trying to, we've already come up with an idea for the assignment where it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna have um, recorded, we're gonna have footage that we use for that project, but we're gonna use uh, we're going to get you to help make that footage, right? So, so that's cool. Let me check out the questions. Oh, but what you mean is, is I pick the movie and scene and the students try to recreate. Sure. Yeah. I mean, basically what we have is a lot of assignments during the module. And so um, what we do is we're, we focus on um, a specific skill set, right? So if the specific skill set is learning how to use a particle emitter and learning how to use particles in Maya, then we um, then we we'll, I'll have a specific shot that I'm trying to get you to make to to do that. Um, if you're making a matte painting, so the the stuff that we usually do is compositing shots, um, like set extensions, matte paintings, and um, and dynamic simulations. So yeah, we'll have a specific thing in mind for you to do. And these assignments are designed to, you know, if you do them really well, they can go into your portfolio. In this course, is this course specific to movies and TV shows or does it also cover games? We have a separate program that does game art, right? So they're called 3D Animation and Games and they're focused more on doing game related uh, doing like stuff specifically for games, but there's a lot of overlap. Um, the the program leader for um, for three D animation and games is um, is you know a friend of mine. So we we talk a lot about how we have a lot in common. You know, we're both using Maya, 
And um, and so, but our stuff is usually the how we set ourselves apart from them is they're focused a little bit more towards games, and we're focused a little bit toward more towards film and TV. Although those are blending, aren't they? Because you know, if you look at everything that's going on with the Mandalorian and all these things with virtual production, then you can see that they'll have um, um, a lot of overlap because they're using game engines in movies. So the skills are transferable. You know, we're finding that we have. Uh, one of my graduates, one of our students who's graduating has had a job opportunity to work for an architectural visualization company, right? So it's not even doing anything for, for movies and TV. It's working for an architect, uh, for someone who's a developer building, um, you know, residential stuff, residential communities and stuff. Here's a question from Dan. Will we have access to the other resources in the university, like the esports game room? I ask this because I like doing rendering and compositing with games. That's interesting, it's a cool idea. Um, in terms of other resources of the university, mostly yes. So for example, um, if there's someone from a non VFX course, right? So if there's someone from computer science or, or fashion or something or dance or something like that, and they're interested in doing something in the green screen room, which is usually sort of um, it's not ours, but it's just an area that's a specialist space that's for um, certain things. Yeah, there's still an opportunity for those people to, with assistance, with the help of technicians, um, use that room. So if you identify a, a, a resource that you want to use, then um, usually it's better if that's for a project for school. It's easier to justify that and to go to that person, the person who um, can help with that. And um, and and make that happen. So yeah, it is possible. It is possible um, within reason, you know, because yeah, everything's always within reason. Great. So by rendering and compositing with games, are you talking about like ex extended reality type of thing? Where um, I've seen some things where um, where people are doing um, a virtual reality game called Beat Saber. I don't know if you've heard of that, but they're doing XR. So we've been doing something like that. We've been doing some virtual reality projects. We've been doing some augmented reality projects as well, where um, where we're mixing CG and live action, and we're putting, you know, we can put a person into a, a game environment in Unreal. Um, we're getting some new kit for that as well, which is really cool. You've done some renders and some animation with game characters from Call of Duty. That's great. Cool, 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 cool. Definitely. I mean, in that case, make sure you put that in your personal statement in your application, so that way the admissions team can see that you have already been doing um, um, some work in 3D, so that way um, um, that experience is noted. You know what I mean? Because there is the UCAS sort of tariff. There is the sort of um, the grades um, component of the application requirements. But also, um, if you have any existing video work, 2D, you know, Photoshop work, um, drawing and painting, um, put a little portfolio together and send it through. We love to see that kind of stuff. We like to know as much as possible about the student's existing experience before they come in. Um, because because it helps us just know how to target our, our material better. So definitely make sure that the admissions team knows about that that stuff, so that way um, that is so it's taken into account. Because I weigh that quite heavily. If someone has ex existing experience with um, with three D in, in particular, I think that's quite important. And it's not impossible to learn before before school. You know, it's it's not the type of thing where you have to wait for us to show you Blender. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of material out there. What we provide is community um, that you can't get just by doing YouTube videos and you know courses online. What we provide is community. We provide coaching and advice. We provide access to Kit. We provide access to Render Farm. Um, there's quite a lot that we that we give, as well as being, it's, it's sort of a mega Patreon, right? Where you have access to um, video resources that, that no one else has access to. Um, oh, here's my silly welcome video. You know, and um, yeah, so basically we have so many videos. So I might send you to a video, but it's a video I recorded. It's of me explaining it. But so for example, I may not have the, um, the, 
the time in that moment when you need it to explain something. But what I can do is I can say, look, I've recorded a video on that. Can you just go watch it and try it and let me know um, if, if it worked for you? And if there's any challenges with that, then we can, um, then we can work from there. So it's sort of leveraging the work that we've done, which is it's kind of working smarter, not harder type of thing, where there are a lot of students to support and whenever possible we do that. So that's what we're offering as, as um, value for money for a university. You know, it's quite a lot of support. It's a lot of learning resources and a lot of access, you know, to, to other people who are like-minded as well as uh, kit and things like that, you know, when, when things are working really well. But we'll find out. Um, you know, all of, everything's subject to change. If the if the government changes some policy, if some policy changes, then then we have to abide by that, obviously. But this is what we're planning. Um, I think it's a good plan, to be honest with you. I think that we have a lot of opportunities to do um, to do a lot of really fun work this year. So there are three minutes left. Um, I'll give you one more minute to ask any further questions, but I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, again, make sure that if you have any questions at all, here's a question from Dan asking, you say we will be working with ZBrush and Substance. Will we be doing much drawing for normal color maps? Sure, yeah, I mean, and in our DMWs, in our digital media workshops, our computer labs, we have Wacom tablets, we have Cintiqs, the big screen ones. And so um, we really recommend using that. If you're working from home, then, and you have your own, if you want to buy your own computer equipment, then definitely recommend doing um, Wacom tablets, um, get great at getting a Wacom tablet for that purpose. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's usually, you usually get better results. I have seen people do really good results with a mouse, but um, get really good results from a mouse, but it, it can be quite difficult um, to do that. So will you be doing much drawing? We're not necessarily requiring that people draw or we have been drawing their whole lives um, before coming into the course, but we do have um, a weekly figure drawing workshop that you can attend um, voluntarily. So if you wanna work on your drawing skills, we have that. Is this course mainly, Petco asks, um, is this course mainly practical or is there a lot of written work too? This is a practical course. Um, this is a university, so we can't get rid of all the written work, but usually the written work has to do with um, documenting your project as you go. So basically in the first year, let me find this slide. Um, I hope that answered your question, Dan. So, um, so Petco, what we do is sort of, we are preparing you in your, in your third year, you're doing a dissertation, you're doing a final major project and a dissertation. But, and that's to prepare you for that, you do the same thing. Um, it's, it's sort of a reflective report, right? So every week you're required to show us the progress. It's sort of like a weeklies meeting and where you're getting feedback, you're, you're required to show us project progress. And in addition to that, um, filling out a reflective report as you go. Um, I can't show you really examples of, of, of some of those because of data protection, but um, we find that if you just keep up with it week by week, then um, we find that if you keep up with that week by week, you have way more than enough words and your, your task then becomes editing down to the word count and getting rid of and doing spelling and grammar checks. So um, it's not a scary amount of writing. It's just, it's, it's like keeping a journal, of keeping a weekly journal to keep track of your progress. That's all it is. Um, and we do have some um, research-based um, stuff as well in terms of um, like a skills audit, like at the end of the year two, we'll do a, a skills audit where you're planning out, um, where you're sort of mapping out your, um, um, your skill set and, and sort of looking in the mirror a little bit about what it is that, that you can do going into. Um, okay, so. Yeah, questions are good. No problem with questions. I'm going to answer these two last these two questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, but I'm I'm glad you're asking questions. This is really good. Um, so, will we get access to Adobe programs? Yes. The answer is yes. So every student has uh, well, every visual effects student has access to the full Adobe suite. That's what I'm using here, the Premiere. You have access to everything. Um, Creative Cloud, you know that whole thing. 
Does this, of course, include SFX or just mainly VFX and visual goodies? Uh, it's mostly VFX and visual goodies. Yeah, we're um, only SFX in the sense of lighting, if you're going to do some lighting tricks or something like that. Um, we do um, like forced perspective types of projects where we're working with um, perspective tricks, like in the movie The Hobbit um, and Lord of the Rings and things. Um, I worked on The Hobbit, did a couple shots for The Hobbit. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, but in terms of like practical fire and smoke and stuff like that, we're not really doing that. We might go over, there have been a couple of times when we have visited the uh, the theater department where their scenographers, their scene, pe scene and environment people have, have demonstrated some fire stuff with us and we've gotten some footage of that. But it's not really often that we do that. We'll do, sometimes during Halloween, we'll do this, um, a really fun activity where we have sort of prosthetic scars and things. So we'll put like a scar on, we'll do like, so we've got molds to do like a silicone um, um, cast of a, of a scar. And then we use the, the proper materials to, to glue it and like blend it in with the paint and, and things like that. So that's a fun activity that we can do. Um, but for the most part, um, we're not messing with that. We're really doing, we're really a, a software based um, course. And I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, I want to thank you for being here. If you ask questions, thank you very much. If, um, let's see, your my attendees list. I'm going to try and remember these names. Oh, I know a couple of these names. I've seen a couple of you before. So hello to you. And um, yeah, great. I, I hope you'll come to Middlesex University. And um, if you have any questions or any doubts, please email me and I'm happy to discuss it with you. But um, yeah, we've got a we've got a fun little program here. There's a lot of cool projects, a lot of fun project based work that we're doing. And um, so if you're if you're ready for that, and if you want to um, do that kind of work, and if you're curious about how things work, then then this is the course for you. So I'm going to wrap it up there.